Hello guys, my name is Miserable, and today we'll be going into the history of one of my favorite game franchises, Bokujo Monogatari, or as some of you may know it, Harvest Moon and then later Story of Seasons. A simplified explanation of Bokujo Monogatari, meaning farm story, tells the story of a young person taking over a farm and building a connection to nature as well as the people nearby. And while this sounds very simple, the gameplay has a way of drawing people in to play for hours at a time. To see your farm grow from a trashed field covered in weeds and rubble, to crops spanning most of your land feels so rewarding. Raising animals from babies to adulthood and bonding with them throughout the years gives you a reason to want to come back and care for them and enter them into festivals just to see how strong your bond actually is. You're encouraged to explore and interact with the town's people through everyday conversations to find out more about their lives. These bonds will let you know their motivations and dreams, and in the case of some villagers, allows you to start a family of your own. In order to understand why Bokujo games were designed this way, we have to know more about the man who created them. Yashihiro Wada has been a game designer and producer for over 20 years. He grew up in a rural part of Kyushu, Japan, and later moved to Tokyo to pursue becoming a game designer. Upon his arrival to the big city, he realized that some parts of living in the country should be more appreciated. This feeling, as well as Derby Stallion, a horse training game, inspired the first Bokujo Monogatari. Wada wanted his game to be different from his predecessors, whose games focused more on combat and competitiveness, so he decided to create a farming life simulator. The game was a hard sale with his bosses, and he needed to prove himself with smaller successes first. After two years of work, this success came in the form of Magical Poppin, a side-scrolling action platformer for the Super Famicom, also known as the SNES. The game saw mild success at the time, but that was enough for Wada to gain the budget and respect to pitch his game and get development started. Early development of the game brought a few challenges for Wada, first of which was why people would want to play a farming game to begin with. It's here that the inspiration from Derby Stallion showed itself. He wanted to give the players something to feel satisfied over such as proper training in Derby Stallion leading to better race results. It was also believed that having a screen full of stats would take the player out of the game and that animation and visual cues would be better display of game progression. A few other hurdles would come in as well, finding that satisfaction previously discussed as well as balance between the gameplay being fun or tedious. Every aspect of caring for livestock would not feel very fun, so caring for animals was simplified. Later, more daily tasks such as clearing land and growing crops were added to keep players interested as seeing that the results of their work would be rewarding. The team also found that interacting with villagers was a bit dull, so the idea of finding a wife to marry and starting a family was added to give more meaning to the interactions. And unfortunately, the SNES's technical limitations also caused problems as some ideas had to be cut or scaled back in order for the game to function properly. While all of this was happening, the parent company Wada worked for was having major financial issues that almost caused development to stop altogether. With the encouragement of a few of his co-workers, the team pushed through in the first Bokujo Monogatari, previously titled Jinsei Monogatari, or Life Story, was born. On August 9th, 1996, Bokujo Monogatari was released on the SNES to a lukewarm reception as far as sales, with only 20,000 copies sold but it did receive very positive reviews. It was through word of mouth that the game's popularity grew. It was later localized and released in North America in 1997, in Europe in 1998, under the title Harvest Moon. The localizations of course changed a few things such as making alcohol juice and westernizing character names and dialogue, but it still built a loyal fan base over in the West. The game's success prompted the publishers to want more games in the franchise, and Wada was hesitant at first, but he felt an obligation to the company that backed him, so Harvest Moon was released for the Game Boy as well as Nintendo 64, with both being huge successes. Harvest Moon 64 was able to include features that had been removed due to the SNES's limitations. Some of these features included a limited time to work during the day, as well as certain shops being open or closed during certain times of the day or week. For most fans in the West, Harvest Moon 64 was credited as the first game they played in the franchise and is still considered to be a fan favorite. 
Wada himself called it the closest to his original vision for the game. The next major title in the series was Harvest Moon Back to Nature for the PlayStation in December 1999. This game went on to be widely regarded by many as the best in the franchise depending on which version they people know it by. That's because this game has been remade multiple times. In 2005, we had Harvest Moon for Girl that was released, although it did see receive some criticism as the game ended when the female protagonist got married. Both games were later packaged together as Harvest Moon Boy and Girl for the PlayStation Portable. It was then again remade for the Game Boy Advance, which is the version most people probably know it as. Harvest Moon, Friends of Mineral Town, and more Friends of Mineral Town respectively. And then, as most current fans will also know, in October 2019, another remake came out for the Nintendo Switch, titled Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. Out of all the games in the franchise, this is the one that has been remade the most. And now, we're beginning the PlayStation 2 and GameCube era of the series. This era produced not only my favorite game in the franchise, but also a few less memorable ones. It's also where the games branched out a bit and started to try many new mechanics and features. It all starts with the re release of Bokujo Monogatari 3, or Harvest Moon Save the Homeland, for the PlayStation 2. The main objective of this game is befriending villagers and helping them achieve their goals in order to stop the town from being turned into a theme park with nine different endings being possible. Save the Homeland did remove many features such as marriage and only gave the player one year to complete their task. This made the game feel incomplete, even though obtaining the multiple endings was the main goal. It took away that feeling of living a full life. However, the game did well enough to later be released as Hero of Leaf Valley for the PlayStation Portable. This was the last game published under the name Victor Interactive, as the company would be bought by Marvelous Entertainment and renamed Marvelous Interactive in September of 2003. The Bokujo series came back with a bang with my favorite series, Bokujo Monogatari Wonderful Life, or Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life for the Nintendo GameCube, which released in September of 2003. This is the only game in the series where it actually felt like the protagonist lives a full life. You start out as a young man taking over your father's farm and growing into an old man leaving the farm in the hands of your only son. Many additions were made, such as the villagers growing older with you, owning new animals like bulls and ducks and a goat, and seeing your child grow from an infant to an adult. This feature does require some suspension of disbelief as villagers older than you, including your father's best friend, outlive you. The player was able to connect more friends of Mineral Town for the Game Boy Advance if you had the cables in order to hook up your handheld to your Nintendo GameCube. The game received very positive reviews, but some marks off for its lack of festivals and a rather monotone soundtrack. A female version of the game, called Harvest Moon Another Wonderful Life, was released for the GameCube in July of 2005, and a special edition later released for the PlayStation 2. And the last game released on the GameCube was Harvest Moon Magical Melody in November of 2005. This is the first game in the series that added what would become a reoccurring story beat of waking up the Harvest Goddess from a slumber or completing a quest in order to bring her power back. This is done through gathering musical notes by completing everyday tasks or random objectives. The game is also known to be the first without the involvement of the original developers Victor Interactive other than that of Wada himself. Thus we begin the DS and Wii era and the end of the Wada era starting with Harvest Moon DS. The game released March of 2005 to mixed reception, ranging from average to good. The game did borrow heavily from the Mineral Town games and A Wonderful Life, with a bit of magical melody as the Harvest Goddess was petrified yet again, and you must release her. A female version, Harvest Moon DS Cute, came out later the same year in September of 2005. Bokujo Monogatari Kimi no Sodatsu Shima, or Harvest Moon Island of Happiness, was the next of many DS games to release on February 1st, 2007, and the first with no involvement from WADA, partially due to Marvelous Interactive merging with his parent company and becoming Marvelous Entertainment, with WADA as the company president. This was the first time the main protagonists were not taking over a farm from a relative in the series, as well as you being trapped on a deserted island and building a community in order to survive. The game received a lot of criticism for its slow movement and for the stylus interaction not being very innovative. 
what could be seen as an alternate reality to this game, is Harvest Moon Sunshine Islands that was later released for the DS to fix issues with the previous game. It used the same cast, but has a different story. Something similar occurred with the Wii games as well. Because a few months later, Bokujo Monogatari Yasuragi no Ki, also known as Harvest Moon Tree of Tranquility, was the first game released for Nintendo Wii in June of 2007. The sacred tree on the island has died and the player now must work to build the land and relationships with the town's people in order to bring back the tree. Over a year later, Bokujo Monogatari Waku Waku Anamaru Machi, or Harvest Moon Animal Parade, were released on October 30th, 2008. This game fixed some of the issues with the Wii remote controls that Tree of Tranquility had and allowed the player to till land without using the motion controls. It uh, also allowed someone with a second controller to pet NPCs. Yep, you're gonna be tasked with collecting the five bells to summon the Harvest God and save the Divine Tree. This is also the only game since the original Harvest Moon that allows the player to have two children and is also the last in the series to allow this feature. I do hope we get to see this again. Animal Parade was the last game until Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town, that were released on a home console. Sadly, it is also the last game that Yoshihiro Wada would ever work on in his, this beloved franchise that he started 10 years prior. It was in 2009 that he decided to leave the company altogether to pursue other goals. He later founded the company Toy Box in 2011 and produced titles such as Birthdays Are Beginnings and Little Dragon's Cafe. From this point on, Marvelous were on their own and the franchise in their hands. For a while, most of these games were pretty average. It is unfortunately the problem that many had with the DS games for a long time. The gameplay became repetitive and lacked innovation. It started with Harvest Moon Grand Bazaar, which was released for the DS in December of 2008. The player is tasked with restoring the Great Bazaar of Zephyr Town to its glory days by farming and selling items to draw people from distant lands in. The reception was very lackluster. With the release of the 3DS, the next game in the franchise had two versions. One for the DS and one for the 3DS. And that would be Harvest Moon A Tale of Two Towns in July of 2010. The player loses their memory hmm, Moon Factory, of which town they had lived in, Konohana or Bluebell, two rival towns that were once very close, and you must now choose where you're going to live, in the farming focus Konohana or the ranching in Bluebell. An updated version was later released to fix controls and add street paths to the game. And then we have Bokujo Monogatari, Hajimari no Daichi, Harvest Moon, A New Beginning, released on February 23rd, 2012. And this game added a lot of new features. You could tell that Marvelous was finding their own group with the games and ready to try new things. Character customization was added, being able to design your house and furniture, and even being able to design the town you live in. The game had a multiplayer feature, allowing players to bring their animals and share in milking and shearing. This could spawn giant animals for more produce and in turn, more money. The basic story is that it's time to revitalize the abandoned Echo Town and bring back the villagers that left, rebuild the town from scratch, all the while caring for your farm. This was the first game in a long time that received a great reception despite its long tutorial and opening season. A New Beginning was a breath of fresh air for fans and was also the last game before the infamous Marvelous and Natsume split. Let's briefly go over the Natsume and Marvelous split, although I'm sure by now most of you have heard about it. In 2011, Marvelous Entertainment merged with AQ Interactive to become Marvelous AQL Incorporated, and would later be renamed Marvelous in 2014. With this merger, Marvelous obtained AQ's publishing company, Xseed Games. As Xseed had published games for Marvelous in the past, including Rune Factory Frontier for the Wii, it only made sense from a business perspective to have their in-house publisher localize all of their games. So in 2014, Marvelous announced that all future Bokujo games would now be published by Xseed. However, due to Natsume owning the trademark on the title Harvest Moon, a new name had to be given to the series. This title would be Story of Seasons, and Natsume would continue to make games under the title Harvest Moon. This caused a lot of confusion for fans, as most of the time had no idea the split even occurred, or that Natsume wasn't even the producer of the franchise. So from this point onward, 
All Bokujo games go by story of seasons in the West, starting with the 3DS game Bokujo Monogatari Tsunagaru Shintenchi. Features from a new beginning, such as character customization, return in this game, but it also brings in some innovation, including how crops are now done on a 3x3 three three field instead of doing one at a time, setting up an animal safari, and having an in-game rival. You and your rivals are tasked to make your town into a renowned trading village. The game was very well received, and it is credited as XSEED's fastest selling game in the US in 2015. This of course spawned the sequel, Story of Seasons Trio of Towns. In this game, you have decided to leave your family and become a farmer after having a dream, remembering the time your mother took you to visit a farm as a child. Your father does not believe you were able to do such a job, and only agreed to let you go to prove that you would be unable to do so. You must help the three nearby villages thrive, as well as prove to your father that you were meant to be a farmer. Some new features were added, like working part-time jobs and familiar pets. This was the last game in the Bokujo series for the 3DS. And now, we're in current day, where the last game released was a remake for Back to Nature and Friends of Mineral Town entitled Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. While the basic story is still the same, some new features were added to the game. Marriage candidates now have two new heart events, the ability to now walk over crops making it easier to harvest, and same-sex marriage to name a few. A few of the characters were given their Japanese names instead of the ones we had from the localization, and the characters were all redesigned. This fresh retelling of a beloved game in the series is still as addictive as ever, and I find myself getting lost playing for hours. Well guys, that's all we have for the current history of Bokujo Monogatari. A new game in the franchise, Bokujo Monogatari, Oribu Ton Tuhibo no Daichi, or Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town, will be releasing in March of 2021. So the franchise is still going strong after 24 years. Wada may no longer be working on these games, but his dreams and visions live on. It has inspired many others to follow in his footsteps and create games like Stardew Valley and World's Dawn. With new games in the genre and fresh competition, we can expect great new farming sims to keep enjoying for years to come. You may have also noticed that I barely mentioned the Rune Factory games. Not to worry, as these games deserve their own video. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Bye!